So how do we maintain consistent volumes in our drawings as we animate? The answer is through flipping and comparing one drawing to the other. Let me demonstrate. The best way to check your volumes is by flipping the squash drawing with the original drawing of the ball so you can see if the volumes remain consistent. In this example, you can see that the ball loses volume. It's deflated instead of squashed out. Now let's create a squash drawing with the proper volume. Flipping is a very important technique to learn and is essential to be able to check the consistency of your volumes. Let's use the bouncing ball again as another example. As it squashes and stretches, the volume inside the ball should not shrink or grow. Many animators, when they stretch or squash the ball, will draw it with less volume, and so it appears to shrink in size. Flipping needs to become a natural habit. As an animator, it is part of what we do. I'm amazed at how many animators that I've come across, especially in other countries, who have not yet learned how to do this correctly. Flipping our drawings enables us to see the overall movement and therefore create it properly. That's why we animate on bottom pegs, so that we can roll our drawings consistently, being able to see it move in front of us. The first way to flip is between two drawings. This is done by simply putting two drawings together and flipping the top page to reveal the second, thus relating them to see how the two drawings play against each other. The second way is by rolling your drawings. This is done by simply putting each of your non-drawing fingers between five pieces of animation paper and then fanning or rolling the fingers back and forth to reveal each drawing in sequence, thus showing the movement. So uh, when you flip your drawings, here's a couple of tips. When you're rolling it, the great thing about rolling your drawings is you can see five drawings at a time. It's important that you're able to, you know, get up. I guess it helps to have long fingers, but I know there's a lot of animators that don't have long fingers that do this just fine. So uh, it's also in the technique of probably uh, bending your wrist down at a 45 degree angle, maybe be pulling down towards your belt. And the other good uh, thing to remember is that you take your, your drawing hand as you flip and you put it here on the peg so that they don't come off as you're looking down and seeing your work. But it's very important that you learn all these techniques of how to flip because it needs to become second nature. And the last way you can flip your drawings is what we call foam book style. And this is when you have a greater portion of your animation, when you have enough, like this great big scene here, we can uh, make sure that everything's even here. Then you take your non-drawing hand underneath and grab on the top, uh, bend it over, grab it. It creates a beveled edge. Grab it again on top with your other hand. Put it high above your head and flip as smoothly as possible to be able to see how that scene works. And you're able to see the texture of the acting and be able to judge it. So all these ways of flipping, again, it should become natural to you in second nature. Is That's the way that we see as animators, and that's very important. You know, that way you, you're able to see how drawings relate instead of just working on one drawing at a time, which makes for very stiff, very boring work. And the second way to check your work, as I've mentioned before, is by shooting a rough pencil test. This is what you do when you have completed enough work and want to see it play in real time on the screen. The important thing to know is that the pencil tester is your best friend. It's a tool which will allow you to view your work quickly and early in the process. You can shoot a very rough pencil test in the beginning of the process and then make the necessary changes needed before you tie any drawings down. 